Okay, hi everyone, we're gonna get started. Um, hello, my name is Megan Carpenter. I am the secretary of this year's Grand Rapids Mayor's Youth Council and a junior at City High Middle School. Welcome to Kids Speak 2022. Educate, cherish, and conserve. I would also like to introduce Evie Duncan, who is a freshman at Grand Rapids Museum High School, who will also be speaking about today's program. We are so happy we are back in person this year to facilitate Kids Speak, as I'm sure you all are as well. And thank you so much for being here. Hello, my name is Jalen Calderon. I am this year's Kids Speak Subcommittee Chair, a member of the Grand Rapids Mayor's Youth Council and a junior at Grand Rapids University Preparatory Academy. Megan, Evie, and I will be your MCs. Today's proceedings will also be live streamed on the city's Facebook page and YouTube channel. We want to give a special shout out to all of those who are joining us online and to Travis and Serena at the city's cable television administration for working behind the scenes to ensure the most optimal visual presentation. During our time together, you will hear directly from young people about a subject that was selected by the Mayor's Youth Council. You will hear very candid, revealing, and inspirational testimonies. These testimonies have not been censored by us. As chair of this year's Kids Speak, I would like to take a moment to tell you about how we arrived on this year's topic. There are many topics that should be addressed that are within our community, schools, and ourselves. This year, we chose three topics that we felt that should be talked about that are connected to each other in different settings and impact students' lives regularly. Education, K-12, through cherish mental health, and conserve environment. These three subjects are important in today's changing world. KidSpeak is an annual forum created by Michigan's children and facilitated throughout Michigan. In Grand Rapids, this forum is facilitated by the Mayor's Youth Council. We are a group of high school teens who live in the city of Grand Rapids and attend various schools across the city. The Mayor's Youth Council meets with Mayor Bliss monthly to discuss issues that come before the city commission and issues of importance to us. We are learning about our community and the role city government plays in our lives so that we are more informed and can be lifelong leaders for when the city is in our hands. The Mayor's Youth Council is managed by Our Community's Children, a public and private partnership between the City of Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids Public Schools, and community partners. This year's Kids Speak commemorative t-shirt was designed by our fellow Mayor's Youth Council, Abigail Hahn, who is a senior at City High Middle School. The t-shirts were screen printed by Triple J's. Unfortunately, Abigail was, is unable to join us today, but another member of the MYC will read her statement regarding the t-shirt design in her place. P please welcome Maddie Uren. Hi everyone. Although I am not able to be with you all at Kids Speak today, I'm grateful to have been given the opportunity to design this year's t-shirt. I initially struggled to imagine how I would represent three topics, education, mental health, and the environment, with a single design. But after a few pages of haphazard sketches in the back of a notebook, I decided there were two things I wanted to depict in my final digitized drawing. The first was genuine care for the earth and the lives it is home to, which is something I believe everyone speaking this morning holds. That's depicted by the watering can. And the second was to show the growth that, growth that can result from this care. That's depicted from the, by the plants overflowing from the person's head. I placed the title for this year's Kids Speak, Educate, Cherish, Conserve, in the water droplets. I find education and cherishment to be two of many empowering forces behind promoting and conserving the well-being of the environment, people, and communities, or for sustaining that weird symbolic garden I drew coming out of head. That's enough about the t-shirts, though. I look forward to hearing all of your testimonies as I listen in from my laptop. Thank you, Maddie, for speaking to Abigail's unique and creative design. Now, please welcome Mayor Rosalind Bliss. Welcome Mayor Bliss as she says some opening remarks and gives the listening panel introduction instructions. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. What a delight it is to be back together again in person. So I, too, join you in uh, being glad that we're back together for this year's Kids Speak. Kids Speak is one of my favorite events uh, every year that we do. It's an incredible opportunity for us to come together and listen to the future leaders, future mayors, future governors of our community. Uh, and it's an opportunity for us to hear about critical issues that are weighing on their hearts and mind. Um, so I'm really delighted to be able to not just spend the entire school year 
with this incredible group of students through the Mayor's Youth Council, but also to have this opportunity to come together with other community leaders uh, to listen to them as they share their thoughts about critical issues facing our community. So welcome everyone. It's a delight to have you here in our chambers uh, and to be a part of this year's Kids Speak. Uh, so I'm just going to turn it over to my peers up here and we can just go around the table and I'll give them the opportunity to introduce themselves. I think I'll start over here with Dr. Roby, maybe end with Matt. Uh, we're also really grateful to have this uh, event every year sponsored and organized and uh, really supported by Michigan's children. So it's good to have you here again. Dr. Roby. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Ledrian Roby. I'm the superintendent of Grand Rapids Public Schools. This is my very first Kids Speak, and I am excited. I believe in the agency and voice of our scholars, and I always am interested in what's on their minds and to see how we can go into solution to make our school communities and our larger um, community just a more productive and positive place for our youth. Good morning, I'm Kimberly Williams, Vice President of the Grand Rapids Public Schools Board of Education, and I am also grateful to be here today to hear the voice of leadership in our city. Thank you all. Good morning, my name is Christian Grant. I serve as the secretary this year for the Grand Rapids Public School Board and very excited, um, not my first kids speak, but always a very moving event and very insightful. So I am excited to hear about the topics this year. Thank you. My name is Catherine Downs Lewis. I'm a trustee on the Grand Rapids Public School Board. This is my third Kids Speak, and everyone I attend, the kids and the speak get better. So I'm expecting great things from all of you today, and thank you for having us here. Maybe we can come up here to Clay. Uh, Clay Pellen, uh, GVSU Center for Educational Partnership. I'm the director. Maggie Lancaster, the CEO at the Grand Rapids Children's Museum. Honored to be here. Hi, everyone. I'm Janae Brower. Um, I'm the CEO of Public Thread, which is a local business here in town that works with upcycled textiles. Hello, everyone. My name is Colin Lewis. I am the current vice president for the Greater Grand Rapids NAACP Youth Council, and I'm Shameless Pug, recent graduate of Grand Valley State University for 2022. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, my name is Jessica Vanderark. I work at Grand Valley. I run the Groundswell program, which is a place-based education hub of the Great Lakes Stewardship Initiative. My name is Kate Coyman. I am district director for Senator Winnie Brinks. So I am her eyes and ears at this event, which really matters to her, but she wasn't able to be here today. She always values the voices of youth in our community and does represent Grand Rapids in the state Senate in Lansing. Good morning, I'm Matt Giller, the president and CEO of Michigan's Children. Thank you, turn it back over. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule, listening panel. And thank you, Mayor Bliss, for your leadership and the time you shared with us this year. One of our partners for Kids Speak is Michigan's Children. Michigan's Children is a statewide organization that advocates for the needs of children. Michigan's Children created Kids Speak and facilitates these forums around the state. Please welcome Matt Gillard and CEO of Michigan's Children as he gives some remarks. Thank you, and, and thank you all for being here. I am Matt Gillard, the President and CEO of Michigan's Children. Michigan's Children is a nonprofit child policy and advocacy organization, and our goal is the pursuit of public policy in the best interest of children, really from, from cradle or, or prenatal through career. Uh, and we think in furtherance of that goal, it's very important for decision makers, elected officials, and leaders in communities around the state to hear directly from young people about the issues that they're facing, about the, the problems that they see, and about the solutions that they see as potential for those problems. Uh, so we do, we, we take great pride in, in helping facilitate events like this around the state. This is one of my favorite that we do every year. It is, as others have said, very nice to be back in person and to see people. Um, we, we got away from that for a while and it's, and it's, 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 means a lot to all of us, I think, to be able to do this back in person again and, and have some of these uh, opportunities to get together and talk about some of these issues. So I want to thank the Mayor's Youth Council, thank Mayor Bliss, uh, thank certainly the listening panel for being here today, but most importantly, thank the young people for, for committing to doing this and being a part of this and for having your voices heard. And I want you to know that, that real change comes out of these events. We, like I said, and like, like um, the Youth Council has said, we 
participate in these events or help facilitate these events around the state. And, and decision makers listen and, and people listen to what young people have to say. And, and we're here to help you amplify that voice and we'll continue to amplify your voice uh, in Lansing and beyond with elected officials from across the state. So thanks everyone for being here and I, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Youth speakers, who you will hear from shortly, were asked to answer one of the following questions that we, the Mayor's Youth Council, helped develop. One, do you feel there are adequate mental health services available to youth through school? How is the education system failing or succeeding in teaching young people about their mental health? What should elected and appointed officials do to ensure all youth thrive emotionally and socially? Two, if you could design a school-based mental health program for youth in kindergarten through 12th grade, describe the elements of that program. Three, how has the return to in-person learning affected your education, sense of safety, and your preparation for the next grade level or life after high school? Four, how does the environment positively and negatively impact one's physical and mental health? Five, how have you been affected by climate change? How should officials combat environmental challenges of climate change, such as clean air and water, waste disposal, deforestation, public health, etc.? Six, in what ways would Grand Rapids be different if it were carbon neutral and or eco-friendly? And what should elected and appointed officials do to achieve these goals? Are seven, are some communities or neighborhoods impacted by climate change more than others? If so, how? And how might it be different if pollution and or climate change didn't exist? And eight, why do you care about the environment? What about it is important to you? Also, as an add-on topic this year, we are allowing students and youth to speak about police reform. Without further ado, please welcome our first speaker. Amaya Glass, ninth grade, CA Frost Environmental Science Academy. Unfortunately, she was unable to join us today, so I will be reading her testimony for her. Her, the question she answered was, how has the return in person learning affected your education, sense of safety, and your preparation for the next grade level or life after high school? Give examples. Well, as someone who just got into high school, I've got to say, learning at this age is so difficult and just so indifferent from past years. From only getting graded off assessments to not exactly picking up the information I have been given. Past years, I've had a wonderful time learning and having a good time, but this year is a struggle. And while asking for help isn't a lot of people's strong suits either, because a lot of the kids feel dumb for asking for help, and adults don't understand that a lot of people have told their child they're stupid or they just feel like it. Telling someone to ignore what someone says is so hard, so when your child is struggling, step in and help them. Safety isn't actually something you expect in our schools. Drugs, guns, you name it. It's probably going on at school and the teachers won't punish anyone. They give them a slap on the wrist and let them go. School, let them go. Schooling is stressful, so check on your children and see how school is really affecting them. As someone who's been through traumatic experiences at school, there are probably things that make your child keep to themselves. I've been through gun threats, bomb threats, homophobia, racism, you name it. It takes a toll on you. Next, we have Matteo Calderon Monterusso, second grade, Congress Elementary School. My, my favorite things about outside are trees for my swings, garden for my hands, and grass to play soccer. Please don't take away my fun. Make it better for everyone. Thank you, Mateo. Um, Next, we have Aaron Howard, ninth grade, Southwest Middle High School. Hello. 37% um, of high school students say they experienced mental health issues during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
and 44 say, say they felt unhappy or hopeless throughout this past year. COVID has greatly impacted our way of life and also our mental health. Anxiety and depression has increased 25% during COVID-19. As we try to rebuild and return to our way of life, we have to make sure that we are seeing to the needs of these students who have been impacted by the pandemic, both mentally and emotionally. Most high schoolers will spend an average of six hours in school, so I feel it is vital that schools see to the needs of students' mental health. It's important to not only educate students about the importance of taking care of their mental health, but also providing resources to them. It's not always easy for teenagers to come out and talk about their feelings, but they are hoping someone will reach out to them. Schools should be doing more outside of the curriculum to educate and reach out to students about mental health. I feel that if the school system does more to support and check on their students, teenagers can get the, the support they need. Inputting a student outreach program in our school system could give students struggling with mental health issues access to resources and programs and offering mental health days to give students the opportunity to learn more about mental health and coping skills. Teenagers need someone they can trust and talk to without being judged. If given the opportunity, I would like to share more about what an outreach program, program would look like in our schools. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. Next, we have Darcy Doris, 12th grade, East Kenwood High School. Unfortunately, she was unable to join us, but Jalen Calderon will be reading her testimony. COVID almost had me. At the beginning of 2020, I was at a high point in my life. I had a bunch of friends, I was on the basketball team, and I just turned 16. Come to think of it, I even had confidence that I never knew I had in myself. It was March 13, 2020, my life changed forever. I realized who was really there for me, who had my best interests at heart. At that point was really nobody. If you were to ask me if I had anyone I could talk to, I would hesitate for a second, then say not really. My parents decided that it would be best for the health of myself and others in the household to do online learning for the year. Online learning was so hard, not only academically, but socially and emotionally. Academically, I underperformed, but I still managed with a GPA of over a 3.5. I've had times when I didn't respond to text messages from my friends for days on end and not feel bad about it because I felt alone in the whole situation, not realizing that my friends were going through the same thing. At that point, I thought COVID had me. COVID wasn't just a physical health struggle, as though by many health professionals, but COVID was ultimately a mental war. I constantly beat myself up about not being the absolute best at everything. I didn't do right by myself doing so. So I decided that I needed to snap out of what I was going through. I ended up quitting basketball and joined track where I found the love for, for throwing. I think I overcame my funk by joining a team consisting of my best friend and amazing new friends I made, not to mention the coaching staff. I think track has helped me become the person I am today. Stronger, not only physically, but mentally. I, be I began to become full again, and I finally began to beat the war against myself. COVID almost had me, but the most important lesson I learned was I am enough. My church, First Community AME Church, has also helped me beat this battle. My church family has instilled the faith I needed to get through COVID because it almost had me. I learned that if I can make it, through this, then I can make it through anything. Returning to in-person learning has introduced me to some struggles. I felt the pressure of my athletics and academics, but also being a college student the next year. Having to make some difficult decisions about where to go and what to do, by returning to in-person learning, I finally beat COVID, and I am beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I see that in four weeks, I will be done with high school and beginning the journey of college. I see that in four weeks, I will be crossing the finish line and establishing the footprints in my journey towards greatness. Because of COVID, I found who I am. I am stronger than I look, louder than the roar of a lion and the leader my younger self wanted to be. So as I stand before you distinguished individuals, I encourage you to hear my testimony and remind yourself that you beat the war because you're still here. So continue to fight, grow and inspire others so that we can make Grand Rapids a better place to live. 
there is only one of you, one of you and one of me, and we all make contributions that make Grand Rapids bountiful and beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Darcy, and thank you, Jalen. Now we have Layla Addison from Innovation Central High School. Good morning. When it comes to mental health, I think there aren't enough services throughout the school provided for students. We barely have enough counselors to talk to, and the ones we do have honestly aren't enough for the amount of students that are in each building. The schools are failing us when it comes to discussing mental health. It's barely brung up and talked about, and teachers and staff are constantly using the phrase, I'm here if you need to talk, but it just simply isn't enough, especially considering all the things that are happening in the world right now. Schools need to first make students feel comfortable enough to talk about their emotional and social problems. I believe if we introduce mental health and the importance of it early, students will feel more comfortable talking about what's going on with them in their lives. Schools should start having mental health in elementary schools and discussing it. A good way to get this started would be assemblies to be held for them and small activities just to let them know that, just to let them know the basics of mental health and what it is. Activities can be simple and get kids to learn that it is okay to discuss how they are feeling. Schools can also bring in speakers to discuss mental health. Hearing how important it is from other people and not just the people who work in their school building could be more impactful and get students' attention more. They could bring in people like therapists who have experience and know what to say exactly so that students can actually receive the information. The therapist can do activities to get students engaged and interested in what's going on. Schools should also do daily mental health checks. When kids get to school in the morning, you never know what kind of headspace they're in and what's going on. Morning check-ins could fix this. During our first hours, it could, it would be helpful to have an advisory class where teachers can discuss mental health and have questionnaires for students to answer. Students, teachers can answer, can ask questions about school, home, mental health, social things that are going on with students. I think this will cause more students to have an overall better school day after discussing their problems in the first hour. I personally take time to self-reflect on my week and how I'm feeling about the events that have occurred at the end of the week. This keeps me on top of my mental state and, and deal with problems I'm having early. I think if all students just took the time to reflect on their day and on their week and improve a lot mentally. Schools could help us, can help us students improve our mental health by providing us a time to do this, bringing in more people and resources for us to reach out when, we need, when help is needed. Thank you. Next, we have Nikechi Okuwasi, eighth grader at City High Middle School. Um, as a student of City High Middle, I believe my school offers a modest amount of mental health services, but there is much more that could be done. At City, we are offered services such as individual counseling, group counseling, and emergency counseling. Although these cater to many, there is still much more room for growth, not just at my school, but every school around the world. The school system is failing at teaching young people about mental health. A portion of our education should include thoroughly informing and educating about mental health concerns, triggers, and how to appropriately approach it. Schools should be implementing and normalizing, educating on mental health topics such as anxiety, depression, suicide, ideation, etc., while creating safe spaces for students to express themselves. Schools should also offer opportunities to process ways to deal with mental health concerns or trigger that occur during the school day. For example, having about five to 10 minutes of decompressing time at the end of class. In these times, teachers can inform students of assignments due and give students the space and time to process and prepare for the next class, instead of creating an atmosphere of, continuous, of a continuous rat race. Stud educators and officials have a chance to model healthy emotional choices and guide them through developing their own ment healthy mental emotional state. For some students, this may be the only place they can get this type of support. 
If elected officials are not using class time to educate about mental health, they are missing a critical opportunity to provide a substantial benefit to students in addition to our academics since school itself can be a huge triggering atmosphere for mental health concerns. Officials should reevaluate the school schedule because they have conditioned us to move at a fast pace and without any time to process all the information thrown at us. They should all they should offer programs where students can learn to identify and address specific mental health topics. Scheduling time in between, after, or before classes to create a safe environment for students to gather with facilitators to learn the varying needs and symptoms of mental health. According to the CDC, more than one in three high school students had experienced persistent feelings of sadness or hopelessness. With this dedicated additional support, schools can bridge the gap between what is currently offered and what would be considered adequate school mental health services. Megan Carpenter, 11th grade, City High Middle School. For the longest time, mental health has been a horrendously taboo topic in and out of school as people would rather suppress those feelings of despair than pretend they exist. Thankfully, many schools, especially city and people alike, have strayed away from that train of thought. At city, there are counselors ready to discuss many problems we have, whether that be around our social life or academics. However, although there are resources for us to use if we start to feel lost, I believe that teaching us how to prioritize our mental health has fallen through the cracks. In other words, schools do not do, not do enough to make sure that that we do not get to that feeling in the first place. The heavy emphasis on academic success that only increases as we get older needs to be dealt with in a manner that doesn't involve unhealthy underlying assumptions, such as we need to be picture perfect students in order to succeed in life. Furthermore, as standardized tests become more and more prevalent, especially in junior year, describing such as doors of opportunity and enforcing this underlying idea that you have to get a certain score in order to reach a certain level of success inadvertently unwinds every teaching that schools may have done about mental health. If schools truly want to help their students' mental health, then they will start paying more attention to the signs that, that arise when they start perpetrating such ideations. Thank you. Faye Abio, Innovation Central High School. Good morning. Well, to start off coming back to school after COVID, it made my life more difficult, starting from the changes from seeing my teachers every day to seeing them on a the screen, from having a low social life because due to COVID, we were stuck in our rooms all day, waking up to a screen every morning. The return to in-person learning was pretty hard to get used to at first. Teachers are still used to online work while trying to have the motivation to wake up and get dressed for school when we didn't have that for almost two years. The lack of learning I lost by getting used to saying, I'm just trying to get the credit to move on and graduate when I rarely learn anything during COVID years. In addition to my safety, my sense of safety, COVID made me have an extra precaution on many things I used to believe was nothing. I never realized that a cough could turn into something life-threatening or a headache could make you think, is this the last of my life? The sense of returning back to school with COVID is still have still having to come back from wearing masks over your nose to sitting every other seat just to manage not to get sick and being in contact with somebody who had it or to get quarantined and missing out on school. Some per Preparations were the lack of not being able to fill out college applications and scholarships, low on staffing, a large amount of students being compared to not enough staffing. Thank you. Emma Krim, 5th grade, Coit's Creative Arts Academy. I'm here today to talk about the environment and how we can all do our part to make a difference. Recycling is one of the many important things we can do to help our environment. I am passionate about the environment and how we need to help because there are too many people and animals being affected by pollution. Educating kids at an early age about recycling programs and the benefits teaches kids what things are really recycling and not just garbage. This creates a strong foundation as they get older. One idea is that if we start creating programs in school that will educate kids how to not only recycle at school, but also at home. And come on, we know you adults need help. <laughs> in addition, I think schools can help the community by cleaning up the neighborhoods around them. The classes could take turns taking a trash walk to clean up the playgrounds and sidewalks around the school. 
Often families live near the schools they attend, so cleaning up is a benefit for everyone. We can all make a difference in helping our environment and the world around us, and recycling is one important step. Thank you. Sonia DeWild, ninth grade, Forest Hills Northern High. COVID-19 shut down my school a few months before I finished seventh grade, almost two years ago. It was, at first, a welcome break, as there's always drama in middle school, but the conflict between me and my friends was particularly intense at that time. Online learning commenced, and I made it work as best as I could. I returned to the classroom for the second semester of eighth grade, feeling as if I didn't know what I was doing. I was out of the loop. But after a few weeks, I got back into the groove, seamlessly, and I still say it's one of the best school years I've ever had. All that time away had made me realize just how much I valued learning things in person, as, such as being able to discuss topics and ask questions without the Wi-Fi lagging or the Zoom call freezing. I'm in high school now, and aside from the few kids still wearing masks, things are back to normal. But I think I will never be the same person that I was before COVID. The first semester of ninth grade was pretty rough, to put it lightly. My friends decided that they wanted to do other things with their time, and I was left behind. It was then that my mental health started to decline, followed quickly by my grades. I began averaging C's and D's when I'd been an A student all my life. My poor grades in turn impacted my mental health, and I got stuck in a vicious cycle. I'm fortunate enough to have parents that are advocates for mental health, and I had the privilege of being listened to. After getting an evaluation, I was diagnosed with depression in December. The months filled with apathy, sadness, and anger before my diagnosis and starting treatment were the gateway to a lot of self-knowledge and understanding. To me, it feels like high school was the real return to the world after COVID's debut. And even though I don't feel prepared to change with it, the world after COVID is changing. I have about four years left before I need to figure out what to do with my life, and it feels like everything is moving around me while I'm standing still. The pressure that I feel of having to make a decision soon because everything I do now will matter in the end is crushing. I have so much more to learn, more to do, more to see before I can take hold of that future I can't yet imagine. I'm 14 and a half. I don't know what I'm eating for breakfast tomorrow, much less what career I want to pursue for the rest of my life. All I know right now is that I want to make a difference in the world, this world we're living in. This world full of disease and death and war, this world filled with nature and life and peace. People ask me what I want to be when I grow up and they expect me to have a definite response. Doctor, writer, artist, musician, engineer, scientist. The only answer I can give them is significant. Ty Johnson, 12th grade, City High Middle School. Oh, I do not need this. Cool. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Tyland Johnson. I'm a senior at City High, and I just want to say it's an honor and privilege to be here um, and share my thoughts on this year's Kids Speak event. I would uh, like to address question nine. Police shootings. We hear the same stories routinely over and over again as if they are supposed to be normal. We hear on social media, on the news, about how unarmed black men and women are constantly being murdered by police officers. This is truly heartbreaking to say the least. On April 4th, 2022, an unarmed black male named Patrick Ayola, who was 26 years old and a 26-year-old refugee from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, lost his life of being shot in the back of his head by a Grand Rapids police officer, Christopher Skirt. It is truly important to have spaces to talk about these types of injustices. These types of injustices are ingrained and protected by laws and systems seemingly impossible to change. The job of the police department, according to the preamble of the Constitution of the United States, is to ensure domestic tranquility. This literally means protecting and holding peace at home, ensuring peace in our communities, in our streets. But this is not how the lives of many people see the presence of police officers 
In fact, it's the opposite. While there's few police officers that the community of Grand Rapids loves, there are not many. This is simply because the Grand Rapids Police Department have not do, done their job on ensuring tranquility and establishing justice. There is not even room to, for justice to even be allowed in the Constitution or whatever it says. says um, we are given the basic human rights, the life of liberty, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, the rights of black men and women in the United States of America to pursue life are being diminished when police officers are getting away with taking innocent lives. It's simply not fair. There needs to be a call of action to hold police officers and departments accountable like Christopher Skur for murdering Patrick Iola. Grand Rapids, what are we going to do? What are we going to be remembered for? Are we going to be like the rest of our nation and do nothing to make sure our rights that are quote unquote guaranteed in the Constitution are being fulfilled by establishing justice that should have been already established? As one of my mentors put it, justice is fixing what's broken. It's leaving room for reconciliation. I'll say that again. Justice is fixing what's broken. It's leaving room for reconciliation. However, I see no leaders in this community, the ones that have the ability to make change, help start movements on creating a space where accountability and fairness are at the forefront. Grand Rapids, as of now, our city is looking for answers and looking for the right answers. And the leaders of the community are simply afraid to take the next step. There are many things that could be handed our youth the people sitting right here. With everything going on, all I see that's being passed around or dealt around is fear and lies, like cards. Grand Rapids, everyone in this room, everyone watching the live stream, everyone that will watch this live stream, we simply have a chance. As one of my favorite people ever, Miss Chrissy Konech would put it, we have the chance to become hope dealers. We have the chance of creating the change we are looking for and answer our own questions. Grand Rapids, it is time for the police department to ensure tranquility and establish justice as demanded in the Constitution by creating a system where police officers who commit heinous and spiteful murders are truly held accountable. Grand Rapids, we simply have a chance. Thank you. Marinez Dadgar, 8th grade, City High Middle School. Good morning. I'm a refugee. I've been here for 10 years. I've immigrated from the Middle East. And in all 10 years that I've been here, the environment has not changed. The prompt I selected was, why do you care about the environment? What about it is important to you? The answer is simple. I want to live to be able to witness the alluring sunrises, the sunsets, the blending colors of orange, pink, and purple all on a pastel blue canvas, the stunning bodies of water we have so plenty of without plastic, without waste. We as a society take so many things for granted, including the environment. I want to be able to wake to the sound of the birds chirping, not my brand new iPhone 13 alarm, as if the 11 wasn't good enough. But wait, there's a difference. Guess what? There's four cameras instead of three. And in a couple years, when we sit for hours with our credit cards in our hands, waiting to pre-order the iPhone 20, we'll scroll past the news articles about half of the planet being on fire. But it's okay. We got the iPhone 20, right? We cut down trees for our own greed. We use transportation that runs on fossil fuels daily for our own comfort. Have you ever driven your car to a local store that was half a mile away? I would be happy if everyone was able to truthfully tell me no. But unfortunately, if the answer is no, I wouldn't be here right now. And our planet wouldn't be crumbling to pieces as we watch and consume media to the point where nothing matters to us except our own daily routines. We are so self-absorbed and selfish to the point where we won't even walk a mile. I add the we in there because I do these things too. I guess that makes me hypocritical. 
We spend endless amounts of money to take vacations to Bora Bora and Hawaii to see the beautiful crystal clear water. Yet we don't think about the fact that 771 million people lack access to water, clean water. That's a big number. We open our faucets for minutes, just letting the water run. We eat food that we won't finish. We take hour long showers. We leave the lights on when no one's home. And that frustrates me so much because I can sit here for hours and tell you about the things we do. Yet I cannot tell you about the things we've changed. I want my children to stand here and tell you that they've changed the planet, but that is not realistic. I want them to stand here and tell you they don't see the endless amounts of cigarette buds all over the poor areas of Grand Rapids, the liquor bottles, and the vapes, the trash. The environment is important to me because that chilly breath of air we take outside after a long day of school or work is worth it. That inhale when we're stressed, it's worth it. Walking in the beautiful trails when there's nature and creeks with long trees and the perfect color of green surrounding us, it's worth it. Making small changes to our daily routines are worth it. But change doesn't happen overnight, especially with the planet we call home. There isn't any other planets to love. When we get house fires, we can simply move. When our planet catches on fire, we can't. We die. I want to see green for centuries. We have one chance to live the life of our dreams. We can't mess up. I have an idea. Scrolling on social media, consuming harmful media 24-7 can wait. Let's practice mindfulness instead. I'll help you get started with the list of eight steps. Saving energy at home. Walking, biking, public transport, eating more vegetables, considering our travel, throwing away less food, recycling, changing our home source of energy, switching to an electric vehicle. And yes, I can admit lots of the blame to climate change falls onto corporations. For people with less income, it's hard to do a lot of these things. You have to be privileged to do certain ones, but you don't need money to be mindful. We, get all, we all get those thoughts at 3 in the morning, feeling a burst of productivity. Let's make a list of all the harmful things we do on a daily basis and figure out what we can cut out. That varies per person and per income, but we can all make a change towards a crucial process, saving our past, present, and our future for generations to come. Erica Govia, 11th grade, Grand Rapids City High Middle School. Good evening, my name is Erica Govea. I attend City High Middle School and I am currently a junior. Mental health is a topic that is so interesting to me because it truly shows who is listening to our youth and who truly is pushing for something to change. Before I start, I wanna thank you for inviting me to come here in front of you to speak my truth, my opinions on this ever so influential issue affecting our youth in Grand Rapids. Mental health is something that has had a significant impact not only on your generation, but mine. In fact, 91% of Gen Z population reports struggle with mental health. The CDC is issuing warnings about the mental health crisis that is on the horizon. I believe we are seeing a significant increase in numbers because of the lack of support that is available, available accessible, oh, and comfortable for our youth. The average session of therapy is around $100 and $150. Families should not have to choose between affording a therapist or choosing um, to pay for groceries. This is a topic that has affected me, my loved ones, to the point that I don't want damage, damages to become irreversible. But when talking about the way we can positively change this axis and struggle with mental health, I believe we can be plucking the issue from the root where it sprouted from. I'm talking about generational mental health that is being passed down and is never being assessed or targeted, which leads parents to pass their trauma onto their children, which is a never ending cycle because people don't know how to stop it. With addressing this, I believe therapy and the spread of awareness on mental health should not only be financially accessible, but in some circumstances free. For an example, the location in which I'm employed, New City Kids, we got a stipend for $500 to throw an event called Be The Change, solely focused on bringing awareness and outlets of mental health for the youth I work alongside. And we are doing it 100% free. All they have to do is show up, be vulnerable with themselves and with us. We will have speakers, activities, and the best thing in the world, food. Sharing that we should not feel ashamed over this, rather prevent negative things from occurring and creating outlets which would lead to people not missing more work due to their mental illness. People will start to be able to show up for the people they love rather than continuous cycles of negativity. Show up for the people they love. 
After talking to my community, my people, my youth, I have talked and listened. I asserted that if we truly are going to address this, we need to address the financial income some of us are receiving and how it must increase so we can afford these necessities for us and, and giving us people who we can talk to who make us feel comfortable and make us feel heard because sometimes the thing that people really need is just an ear to listen to them. Touching back to that, to that, I believe listening is our biggest way to support these voices because behind these voices are people. Our generation is crying out to be heard and for our leaders to not just prioritize but normalize mental health. Please hear our voices and continue amplifying our voices. We are here and we believe our community will be healthy because you will prioritize mental health and wellness. Community rises together. This is not a struggle we should face along, but along each other. Thank you. Can we get another round of applause, speakers? You did an amazing job. Switching gears for a moment, high school students who live in the city limits of Grand Rapids, we encourage you to apply for the Mayor's Youth Council. The application is online at www.ourcommunitieschildren.com. If you will be entering the grades 9 through 12 next year and want to learn more about city government, please apply. We would like to take a minute to acknowledge and thank our partners and sponsors. Our community's children, Michigan's children, the city of Grand Rapids, the Grand Rapids Public Schools, and the Grand Rapids Children's Museum. We would also like for the listening panelists and the youth speakers to begin filling out their surveys. Your feedback is invaluable and will help us in our planning for next year's event. For those of you who are 18 to 24 years old who are in the room or watching online, if you're looking for a job or opportunity to explore a career path for 16 weeks, making 17 an hour, please apply for the Grow 1000 Academy. The Academy includes a week of pre-employment training followed by 16 weeks of employment being beginning in June. Go to www.grandrapidsmi.gov slash grow1000 and look for the Grow 1000 Academy. Now please welcome Ms. Shannon L. Harris, Executive Director of Our Community's Children and Zachary Laraway, Program Coordinator of Our Community's Children as they give some closing remarks. Thank you and thank you uh, to the MC. So give it up for uh, Jalen and Megan and Evie. Awesome job. I also want to thank the OCC interns this year. We have Karina Cisneros, we have Ashton Duncan, who is a student at Grand Valley State University, and we have uh, Cindy Gonzalez, who is another 2022 uh, graduate, first uh, generation student uh, to graduate from college. So I want to acknowledge their great work and um, all of their, uh, their dedication to ensuring that OCC programs and initiatives uh, ran smoothly this uh, school year. I want to thank the listening panelists. You all being here today is a demonstration of how youth voice uh, is important to you. Um, and we all know that youth voice uh, is uh, very important to our young people to feel a sense of belonging. It helps build their non-cognitive skills, such as public speaking and decision making. And we know that it also builds up their sense of, of self and it prepares them for their future. Um, so if you've been to Kids Speak before, you know that uh, our community's children has, actually you may not know this, but our community's children has hosted Kids Speak uh, since 20, actually since 2000. Our first Kids Speak was uh, at the public library and eventually we moved it over here to City Hall. And uh, if you've been to Kids Speak uh, in the last maybe 15 years, you know that we've had standing room only uh, in the chambers. Um, but this year, um, even if it was just one student that came out for Kids Speak, uh, we know that um, Kids Speak is a, is a worthwhile event and we need to be here for young people and, and provide a space for young people to speak about issues of concern to them no matter what the issue is. And so at this time, I want to open the floor up to listening panelists to give comment about uh, what they've heard, what resonated with you, or give encouragement to our youth speakers. So I want to start with, uh, with our mayor, uh, Mayor Bliss. Thank you, Shannon. Um, I'm going to thank Shannon, too, while she's up here for all of her hard work and leadership with our community's children. <laughs> Shannon. I, and I, I want to 
personally say thank you to all of the students who came up and spoke today. I so appreciate your courage to get up and speak in front of a, a group. I know that that takes courage and it can sometimes cause anxiety. So thank you for your courage. Uh, thank you for your honesty uh, and your heartfelt feedback to all of us. You touched on so many critical issues facing not just young people, but really facing everyone in our community. And I really appreciate the thoughtfulness, uh, not just the thoughtfulness in elevating and describing the challenges, uh, but also a lot of the great suggestions and ideas that you shared with us, ideas around solutions, uh, because that's really what's gonna help us move forward in creating a better, a better community, a better school, a better place for young people uh, to grow and be their best selves. So thank you so much uh, for being here and for stepping up. I also want to thank all the members of my Mayor's Youth Council. I've learned so much from all of you uh, this past year, and I just appreciate your leadership in organizing this event. So thank you. We can just go around the, uh, the table, probably similar how we uh, introduce ourselves if you want to share any feedback. Thank you, scholars, for sharing your voice and your passion and your love for your community, your schools, and, and just speaking from the heart, it always just fills my heart when I hear young people say what they're passionate about. And I agree with Mayor Bliss. It takes courage to come up and speak in front of a group and talk about topics that are meaningful for you, but we as adults need to be able to always engage in that. And so I just applaud you for your passion and your commitment to voice. Um, some of the things that I heard, I was taking notes and we hear you. We want to make sure that the things that are important to you, that we can have some impact on making our schools better and so that you feel that sense of connection and belonging because it is about what your experiences are so that we prepare you for that next level, whatever that may be, as you are transitioning into adulthood. So again, I was I, I shared with you at the beginning, this was my first kid speak and this is awesome. My heart is filled. I, I have thoroughly enjoyed just hearing the feedback, and some of it's kind of hard to hear, but it's stuff that we do need to hear as adults because we want to make sure that we're doing our job to make sure that your childhood experiences, your high school experiences are the most positive that they can be so that we prepare you for your adult life. So thank you all. Thank you so much for the leadership displayed um, from the uh, very youngest, Mateo, to the seniors. Um, I really appreciate your insight. Um, I, too, was taking notes um, as a, a board member for um, Grand Rapids Public Schools. Uh, I was listening intently to see how we can have impact in the areas that you've expressed concerns. Uh, I will be um, sharing some of this with uh, board members that are not present to see how we can um, uh, really design a, a school system that meets your needs. Um, it's not always something that we can do, but where we, where we do have the room, we should be trying to make sure that we are having uh, impact on your experience that um, propels you into your future. And um, thank you so much again for sharing and um, feel free to uh, reach out to us as well as your board members to share um, concerns that you may have beyond these particular topics as well. Thank you. Uh, yes, I will first echo my colleagues saying thank you so much for having the courage to come and express your true feelings, um, even around issues that are hard and that feel personal. Um, it means so much for us to be able to hear from you. I think a lot of times uh, in the work that we do, the, the issues that you've addressed, they're not easy to solve. They're hard issues to tackle. And sometimes it can feel overwhelming, but hearing from um, 
hearing from the group of people in our community that matter the most, that are the most vulnerable, hearing from you about how it affects your daily life really uh, it is motivation for us to go back and keep working. So thank you. I want you to know it's really important uh, for you to share with us. And I also want you to know that uh, it may feel like leaders don't hear you, but we do. And there are some people working really hard on every single issue that you've spoken about, especially around the mental health, the effects of COVID and police reform. It may feel like Sometimes you're just talking into open space, but we have the same feelings and emotions and there are people working really hard every day. So please know that. Um, please hold us accountable, but know that we're working with you. And until you see us not working with you, hold us accountable when you see that. But until you see that, know that there are people who are here working for you. We're, we're not your enemies. And that's really important for, for me, for you guys to hear that, because I want to see you in these positions also working hard for your community when it's your turn. Um, so as my colleague said, there are a lot of notes that I've taken today that I'm going to take back to the district, um, especially around that mental health uh, piece. So, so thank you. We appreciate it. I was especially impressed by the uh, young people who were able to get up here and share such personal experiences concerning their own mental health. Uh, that is an issue that uh, the school board has um, struggled with all during the pandemic, and what can we do for our young people to make them feel better about probably one of the worst things that will ever happen and certainly has ever happened in my life, and it has been difficult for everyone, and I'm glad to hear that some of you have have conquered your, your fears and uh, your anxiety, and that you were strong enough to ask for help and to get the help you needed. And so I'm very proud of all of you. You have exceeded my expectations from the very beginning of the day. So um, know that uh, Grand Rapids Public Schools, 100% behind you. We will be there for you. We'll try our hardest to make things even better for you. Thank you very much. You did a great job. It's great to hear from you. Uh, I would like to echo the about about holding us accountable and holding community leaders accountable. Um, as you graduate, you're going to have the power to vote and organizing your peers and your parents to vote on people that reflect your values is so important and that's how we work, right? So how you can take and make action what you just talked about is through changing who represents you in every level of government. So I would encourage you to keep this passion and take it forward as you go forth in life. Thank you. We're in the head of the Grand Rapids Children's Museum. I just want to say how proud we are. I have a, some of my colleagues over here as well who are very, very excited to listen to you. We, we do hear you, and we are here to help support your education. We are here to help support your mental health. I mean, we have bubbles, people. You, it, but you don't have to be young anymore to come to the Children's Museum. Come and play with us at any time. Hopefully some of you did at your prom recently. And it, yeah, I, not that I was stalking, but I, I, I saw a few of you. And uh, I just am so proud to be a part of this community for that. I also hear you, Mateo. I love trees too. We all do. And we're going to continue to work hard on help creating a better environment. And the police reform, I believe it was Mr. Johnson, I, I just really, really appreciate your thoughts on that. And once again, the Grand Rapids Children's Museum hears you, and we stand behind you. Thank you very much, all of you. Yeah, you guys are fantastic. You're powerful, and your voice is so important. And I'm uh, as, the same as everyone else here, really thankful that you're willing to, to stand up and take time to not only think through what is what is attracting you to a particular issue that you want to talk about, to spend that time to write it down, and then to come here today to miss school and to participate in this process, because this is absolutely how we change our systems. And 
your sharing your personal stories speaks into our democracy, and this is how things change. Um, it takes time, and unfortunately, more time than many of us want, and is incredibly complex, but your voices matter, and they totally spoke to the systemic issues that are impacting all of us, even, I mean, way before COVID, it's just become such an obvious breaking point for so many um, that thankfully has opened space for us to talk about mental health. I never got to talk about this kind of stuff when I was young and the stresses that were going on. And I'm just so thankful that you all are able to be up here and to speak about this and to come up with some of those solutions. Um, I mean, thinking about your day and restructuring the school day so that it actually accounts for mental health is one of those kind of moves that actually takes serious, that you're not just going to try and tack on something to a school day or to something, but actually reorient the whole day to actually shift the way that we operate, to slow down, to think about how do we decompress from what's going on, to give space to talk about what's going on in your life, and then to then wrap around that. Um, that's super powerful, and, and I hope that it can lead to some change in the day. And I, one of the things around, I mean, I have two young girls, um, and they're, too, facing these same issues around their own mental health and depression and challenges and struggles and wanting to be part of the solution but not knowing where they fit. Um, and so I'm really proud of you guys. It does take courage to stand up and speak to the things that matter to you. Um, and I think you all did a great job, and I hope you take this energy out into and back to your schools and into your families and communities and encourage others to do the same thing, because the more of you that speak up, um, the more change will happen. So thank you. Um, honestly, I want to echo all of the panelists. Um, we are extremely proud, grateful, and honestly, I'm very honored to be up here to be able to listen to all of the testimonies that you all have given. Um, it was nothing short of breathtaking. And honestly, it leaves me with one word of just wow. Um, all the amazing things I had written down. I have almost like a whole essay here that take me back to college. Um, and so it just like the ideas kept on flowing. And so I'm just so grateful that you guys were able to continue on and hopefully you can take these things that you have all have spoken about and go further in your lives with it. Um, it really brought a lot of different perspectives from the younger folks that we might not be able to visualize as easily. And so it's definitely important for you all to have done what you did and to continue what you're doing. And so I'm grateful that you're doing the work that you are doing. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, my first thought is uh, it was really brave of everyone to get up there and speak about topics that matter. I know that's not an easy thing to do. Um, so I want to tell you that much of what you said was eye-opening for me personally and helped me think about things. So I appreciate the way that you were all able to share your passion with us. We need people like you that are passionate about issues and that are willing to put those issues out and speak this truth to power even when it doesn't, we don't always make it easy for you to do that mm. as, as youth, and that you are here doing that, speaking truth to us, speaking truth to power. Um, please continue doing that. It's the conversation that's so important, not only the talking, talking, but the listening as well. So I hope that we are good listeners to all of you. Um, keep, keep having that discussion, and I think you all have very bright futures in front of you and appreciate your uh, sharing your little piece of um, wisdom with us. So thanks again and congratulations on your work. I want to just recognize the tremendous toll that, has, that you all are feeling that has um, from COVID, from some of these enormous issues that you all are learning how to face in your future, like climate change, um, what it feels like to live in a community and watch incidents of police violence and how it feels to watch those things on, on a screen. I think that these things take a tremendous toll and you have articulated that so well. And I just wanna um, recognize that you're not making that up, that is real. And that's unique to your generation and that's a big deal. So. Thank you for, for saying that and for saying it so clearly to the people who need to hear it, who know that these are huge issues, who are working to face them and address them so that your future will be bright. 
but um, also it takes such courage to do that. Senator Brinks um, will hear about all of the things that you all mentioned. She cares so deeply about these issues. It's why she ran for office more than 10 years ago to try to be um, to try to, to be a, a change toward equity and education issues and addressing the things that matter to you all. So I will make sure that she hears the stories that you told. Um, Tylen, I think it was you who said that your generation is going to be the hope dealers. And I want to just recognize what a beautiful um, and inspirational phrase that is, that what you've done today has given us some hope because it wasn't easy. You didn't tell us what we wanted to hear, but you told us the truth. And there's such hopefulness in truthful uh, speaking. And then Sonia, I think it was you who said that you wanted your life to be significant. And I want to tell you that you all today have done something significant today. And it is my hope that in the future, you will continue to have the courage and bravery to do significant things like this. We have a, a bright future ahead if you all are the leaders of that. So thank you. Thank you. I want to uh, join the rest of my colleagues here on the listening panel in thanking the, our children's or um, our community's children and the Mayor's Youth Council and certainly all of you um, young people for speaking today. Uh, I can say for certain I feel that the future of Grand Rapids is in good hands with uh, future leaders like you. Um, and I think the, time, the topics were certainly timely. I mean, there's real discussions happening in Lansing and beyond right now around the mental health impacts of of the pandemic on children and what can be done about that. The environment is always a timely issue. Uh, and it's encouraging to see young people, even very young people, uh, express real concerns uh, about where we're going uh, as a society around the environment. And I want to expand upon something that I think Mr. Pilon jumped on. Um, you know, we have a real opportunity in front of us. I, these are timely topics, but unfortunately, still too many of our elected officials and leaders are not prioritizing uh, these issues and prioritizing to the them to the extent that you certainly want them to. Um, we have a big election coming up here in Michigan, uh, and democracy is not a spectator sport. And, and I know and I fully realize most of you will not be able to vote in August in the primary or in November in the general election, but that doesn't mean you can't participate in this election that's coming up. Um, I really encourage you to learn about the candidates that are running to represent you at all levels of government and to engage with those campaigns. We need candidates around the state and certainly here in, in uh, Southwest Michigan and in Grand Rapids hearing about these issues and talking about these issues on the campaign trail. And so elections are a huge advocacy opportunity. They're a huge opportunity to bring these issues to the forefront in these discussions and get candidates, not just candidates talking about them, but the general public and the voting public talking about them as well and then informing the candidates that ultimately will represent you um, someday in our in all, all of our levels of government uh, informed about these issues. And so really, uh, I, I'm excited about the future here for Grand Rapids. I think you have a real voice in front. You, you've demonstrated you have a real voice, um, and I encourage you to continue with your advocacy efforts around these issues. Thank you again, listening panelists, and thank you for your words of encouragement to our young people. I do want to acknowledge uh, OCC staff and their very new, but I wanted to acknowledge that their uh, their presence and their hard work. Um, thus far uh, doesn't go unrecognized. We have Bianca Masafiade, who is in the back there. She is our new uh, retention coordinator. She's our new retention coordinator for our T2C studio, Grand Rapids Center for College Success. Uh, so making sure that our young people that are currently in college get through college to degree. And then we also have uh, Zach Laraway, who I am passing my uh, program coordinator baton to him. Um, and so he is uh, responsible for ensuring that our young people uh, have access to quality after school programs um, here in the city, um, especially with our community's children. And so with that, I'm gonna have Zach come up and say uh, a few words. So thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Um, I'd like to again uh, thank everyone in attendance for coming to this year's Kids Speak event. Uh, I'd like to thank our partners and sponsors, uh, our community's children, of course, uh, Michigan's children, City of Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids Public Schools, and Grand Rapids um, Children's Museum. I'd also like to thank our group of listening panelists for attending today um, and your inspiring words. Um, 
I'd be remiss if I didn't echo Dr. Roby, uh, Maggie Lancaster, Javon, and Janae. Um, uh, as a former uh, GRPS employee and now a current employee with the city of Grand Rapids um, and our community's children, um, my heart swells with pride when I hear all of you speak the way that you do today. Um, and I'm sure that everyone up here can say that as well. Absolutely swells, and we are so proud of you and the way that you come up here and address everyone. I'm, I, I'm grateful to you for doing that. So I just want to let, let, let you guys know that. Um, I think we are all well aware of the struggles our country, state, and local community has faced over the past few years. Um, and how events like this one today can bring those to light from the perspective of our city's youth. Um, as the late Nelson Mandela said, the true character of a society is revealed in how it treats its children. So as we conclude this year's Kids Speak event, let us reflect on the purpose we give to our locality's youth and what opportunities they have access to, such as Kids Speak, to address issues in their own community so we can treat them as the leaders they are. Thank you. I did forget to thank our photographer, so Denavia Mojé from Mojé Photography, one of her many talents. Thank you, Denavia. Thank you, Ms. Shannon, and thank you, Mr. Zach, and once again, thank you, listening panel, and thank you all for joining us. This concludes today's event. We want to invite you all to lunch. We have lunch catered by Garbaldi's. Take the elevator to level one, which is the Calder Plaza level. You have the option of eating inside or outside under the tent that is provided. Thank you again for coming to Kids Speak 2022, and we hope to see you next year.